I'm Tom Bradshaw and we're here to meet Ethan Sanjo and take a look at his brand new, fresh out of the box, Trek Session downhill bike. For those who don't know Ethan, he's a name to look out for. With a second place Junior World Cup finish in 2019 and now part of the Trek RockShock racing team, I'm looking forward to seeing more of his unreal style on the bike soon. Let's go have a yarn. Ethan, great to have you here today, mate. How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for having me. All good. So we've got this beautiful new Trek Session machine in front of us. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear a little bit about you and what's up to what you're up to this year. Yeah. But first, you've just unpacked this. Yeah. What are the first thoughts? Well, definitely first thoughts out of the box are how good that all black's looking. Um, and I'm super interested in the high pivot. So yeah, it's going to be a fun year of trying some different stuff out. You're a tall dude. How tall are you and how did you decide what frame size you're going to go for? So I'm 6'2 and usually for me it's just the extra large or this here is the R3. So for me the bigger the bigger the better. So yeah. Bigger the better, that's that's awesome. So you, we mentioned the wheel size sizes before. There's three options on this bike. You got yeah. full 29er, mullet or 27 and a half. I'm interested to hear what you're starting on because we know Charlie's on the full 29er, he's a taller guy, whereas Reese and Loris are gonna start on the mullet. Yeah, for me it's just, since like you said, Charlie's tall, I'm tall, those guys, they obviously have shorter legs, so I think the issue with them is them buzzing their, their butt sometimes from big compressions, but for me it's not really an issue, so 29 front and back is what feels most natural for me. Nice, and then what would make you perhaps think about trying the mullet set up in the back like obviously early days with the bike but yeah. yeah is it track specific or your style specific or just interested for me it would be just mostly track specific but also to see how it corners would be interesting but i like how the 29er rides so it's not something at the top of my mind right now and then kind of going into the your f process of jumping on a new bike for the first time yeah. like the big change to the high pivot in this new bike does that going to affect the way you set up your suspension to start with or any contact points or anything like that or is it or is it, are you going to start where you were on the old session i think i'll probably just start where i was on the old session and kind of go from there and see how i like the high the suspension with the high pivot and there's also got the the flip chips in this frame yeah. have you had any thoughts around where you're where you're going to start with them yeah. and again like what might make you change them for me, I think I just keep it at 25% just because the way that I ride, I feel like the more progression, the better. Like what would make you change this top minnow link at the top of the seat stay there? I think just a flatter track, yeah. I would keep it in the slack position most of the time, but if there was a track that was uh, really flat and maybe a bit slower, but for me, I just keep it, keep it there. Awesome, and then maybe for those who haven't set up a downhill bike before, like maybe paint us a bit of a picture like, how long does it take? Yeah. Does it ever finish? Oh, that's such a good question because I feel like for me, I go and ride and I'll be always changing a little click here and there, but setting up a downhill bike, it really depends person to person. I'm, I'm pretty chill. I just put, I usually start maybe a little softer on the suspension and then kind of go up from there. Awesome, and this, so this session that we're looking at here yeah. is spec'd out for you on the RockShock Trek team. Yeah. So talk us through kind of a little bit, let's start maybe at the suspension what suspension you're running here and the rest of the team will be on this year. So yeah, we're obviously rock shocks front and back and then the code brakes. Um, for me this year, the only real changes are the Ergon grips, the Maxxis tires and the DT Swiss wheels, so yeah. Perfect, perfect. And then what's your kind of riding weight and do you know what suspension pressure you'll have to start with? Um, for me, since I haven't raced in a while, it'll probably just be my last um, pressures from the last couple World Cups I did, which is I think like 125 in the front and like about 220 in the back. Perfect. And yeah, I mean, is that something you'd be doing? Kind of a, you'd really do the suspension testing properly with the with the team and a mechanic? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, the, like the mechanics are so good these days and you can come down and be like, oh, I don't feel like I'm getting enough from the fork in this certain part of the track. And then they'll do the, put their little magical touch on it. And you'll be like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about the those RSC code brakes before. Yeah. Talk us through that kind of contact point setup. Like, is there anything particular you like um, to do with the brakes there? Yeah, a little bit for me. It's like on the front brake, I like the contact point to be a little further out. 
and then on the back um, a little further and it's just personal preference for me where I where I like that contact point but uh, nothing too crazy. Upstairs in the cockpit Ethan, yeah. what width bars are you running and what length stem? So the bars are 800 and the stems to 50, 50 guy on there. Yeah. That's how I've always, always run it. Nice, nice. And so let's take it back to 2019, yeah. the three World Cups and second place at Maribor, which was, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, talk us through that season quickly. Yeah, that season was crazy. It was like uh, we did Tennessee and I like qualified first in pro and that was like, whoa, what's happening? And then, um, yeah, I won the, that race and then I came home and I had a little training crash and then I took about a week off and then we left for the IXS Cup in Maribor a couple weeks after and I did that race and then I did the race, came second and then had a little, had a beverage after. And um, then my, all, all my symptoms came back and I, I then was feeling really shitty, but I did race the Maribor World Cup. And then from there, I did Fort William and Leo Gang and then we finished Leo Gang and I was pretty written off. So went back home and just kind of had to assess things a bit. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's a severe lingering concussion. Yeah. What do you think about where the sport is in terms of like concussion awareness now and having gone through nearly a year and a half, if not more, yeah. of dealing with this concussion, yeah, totally. like what would you share? I just think it's just, like for me, it was like I had this concussion and I felt like I was putting a lot of expectation on myself to keep racing, because I was like, oh, this is just like this opportunity I have and I had a good result, but I just wasn't really thinking about the long-term effects of it. and. Um, I just say for people to just be more conscious of how that's going to affect them, you know what I mean? So concussions are a huge issue that I feel like are a little bit looked over just because it's not a visible injury. But um, I think it's getting better and better and helmet technology is getting better. So hopefully we can get to a place where people um, are feeling more, more safe in their helmets and at the races. So then maybe just to put a bow on it and to someone who's watching this who might be thinking they've got a head injury or have had one. Yeah. Like what's one thing you might say to them? Be vulnerable. Yeah. Be able to go and seek that help. And even if it's like not your tough guy, macho ideal, who cares? You know what I mean? You want to feel good and be healthy and be able to go and do the stuff you love. Perfect. Thanks, Ethan. Well, it's been awesome talking to you, checking out the new bike, but hearing, hearing that story and that it's not easy and yeah, being vulnerable is part of it. So thanks heaps. And I hope to see you out on the bike soon. Totally, thanks for having me. Thanks to Ethan for sharing what he looks for and how he sets up a brand new downhill bike. And also for opening up the important conversations about head injuries in mountain biking. I hope you took something away from it. We've got tons of videos coming up with bike checks and interviews. So make sure you subscribe if you like what you're watching.